Your Excellency, Minister Omar Shaban, Minister of Trade and Industrial Development of Zanzibar, uh, Secretary, Ministry of External Affairs, Mr. Damu Rami, uh, High Commissioners, both of them, uh, business delegates from India and Tanzania, from IIA and TIC. Namaskar, Havari, a very good afternoon, and as we were reminded, happy Sabha Sabha Day. Uh, I'm very pleased today that uh, I have an opportunity to participate in a business event uh, during my visit to Tanzania. Uh, and my sincere thanks to the Indian Industries Association, uh, the Tanzania uh, Investment Center and other organizers who have come together to put this uh, event in place. Uh, my special thanks to delegates from India uh, who could make it to Dar es Salaam and uh, your uh, visit here will allow you to explore opportunities to further our business and trade relations. Now all of you know that uh, Tanzania and India, we enjoy traditionally close and friendly relations. Uh, we have a very sound political understanding between us. We've seen regular high-level visits, uh, including that of Prime Minister Modi a few years ago. Uh, and we have, of course, uh, very broad, very deep people-to-people uh, -people contacts. Uh, regarding economic ties, because that is the reason we are gathered here today, these have always been a very strong pillar of our cooperation. Uh, despite the global disruption and the COVID challenges, uh, our bilateral trade uh, has actually seen very strong growth. Uh, though there is, uh, I must say, Minister, a uh, bit of a gap between your figures and our figures. Uh, so uh, the Indian figures actually put our bilateral trade uh, last year at $6.4 billion, uh, in, that is in 2022-23. Now, bear in mind, this is not only a very substantial bilateral trade, but it's also uh, actually uh, a bilateral trade which is getting increasingly balanced. Many new products are being added to the trade basket. Uh, and what is most important is that India, uh, whether you follow our figures or Tanzania figures, India remains the biggest destination for Tanzanian exports. So that is something which should matter. And the reason for that is that uh, there is this duty-free uh, tariff scheme extended by India to 33 countries of Africa uh, since 2008, including, I would say, especially to Tanzania. And this has been instrumental in getting uh, Tanzanian exports to India uh, uh, up very significantly. Uh, currently, uh, it opens up 98% of tariff lines from uh, Tanzania to India on a duty-free basis. So as I mentioned, uh, we have uh, different figures for what is our actual trade. Uh, but uh, whether we are your biggest trade partner or not, but I can say we are your best trade partner. Uh, and uh, uh, suddenly, by our, our uh, figures, we are also the biggest. I hope in your figures too that would happen soon. Now, uh, when it comes to uh, the Indian business interest in Tanzania, uh, obviously the way to promote that is through frequent exchanges of delegations, of individual business, of companies. Uh, and uh, I was very happy to learn that in 2022, uh, eight big exhibitions in different sectors took place here. There were more than 700 Indian businessmen who came. And these have certainly helped to promote bilateral trade and investment. And today the presence of a 40-member delegation I think is a source of great satisfaction. Uh, and I really thank uh, the organizers at both ends who have uh, made that possible. Uh, as regards uh, investment, uh, we have seen investments in hospitals, in pharma, in animal vaccine, as we heard, uh, education, in mining, in agro-processing. And uh, I do want to say we are committed to taking it forward and perhaps a time will come when we will see an Indo Indian industrial park uh, in Tanzania. Uh, there is also an issue which has been brought up from time to time, which is the possibility of trade settlements in our own currencies. Uh, and uh, I want to share with you that the Indian Central Bank has cleared such a possibility. So the three bank 
So three Indian banks which are here uh, have that ability uh, to do uh, uh, to do uh, trade settlements in each other's currency. I'm told a few transactions have already taken place in Indian rupees and Tanzanian shillings. And certainly this will provide an additional mechanism uh, to promote trade between our two countries. Now, uh, a few words uh, about India. Uh, I think uh, every it's, it's uh, stands to reason. We are today the fifth largest economy in the world. Uh, our uh, expectation of uh, GDP growth remains strong. Uh, we would be uh, hopefully closing in on 7% this year. But we really have, we are very confident of multiple decades of growth ahead. And we may be one of the fastest growing large economies of the world, but we also recognize that Tanzania has actually put, shown a spectacular economic performance in Africa. Uh, I congratulate you, Minister, colleagues on that achievement. And I think this uh, strong growth at both ends really opens up many more possibilities between us. Uh, where India is concerned, other than uh, trade and investment, we have a strong development partnership. I will speak about it right at the end as well. And these are guided by the 10 principles which Prime Minister Modi uh, spelt out in 2018. And the central message of what uh, he said at that time is that uh, our friendship, our solidarity must be expect, uh, expressed through business, business and development partnerships, but they must respond to the priorities of the partner countries. And that is really uh, what uh, we have been trying to do, and I think many of our projects uh, really uh, reflect that. Uh, in terms of development partnership, the biggest commitment we have is in the water sector. Uh, we have uh, close to a billion dollars of line of credit. Uh, and uh, this water projects uh, will cover 28 towns. Uh, eventually, 8 million people in Tanzania would benefit from that. I had an opportunity of uh, seeing uh, one project which is under construction uh, in Zanzibar yesterday. Uh, and this morning, I visited another one close to Dar es Salaam, uh, which actually uh, pumps in water to Dar es Salaam as well. Uh, I would also like to take the opportunity to acknowledge the uh, support and the uh, role of the 55,000 strong Indian diaspora here. Because the diaspora is always a bridge. Uh, you have an understanding of both ends uh, of the relationship. And uh, as I said, when you see two economies grow so strongly, it's important that uh, there are a set of people who are tracking changes at both ends, who are able to explain these changes to everybody, and who are able to guide uh, people from business uh, uh, who are uh, who are coming here to see what the possibilities are and definitely I would say those businesses who have been here a long time we heard one of them uh, earlier in the afternoon I think they have a particular responsibility uh, in that regard uh, I uh, obviously uh, you know would uh, hope very much that today's event would contribute uh, to uh, stronger business uh, uh, bonding between us but uh, before I conclude, I want to really, you know, we have been talking about business cooperation, investment, trade, but I want to give you a larger context, you know. So don't just think India and Tanzania, but let us look at an African context, even a global context. If I take all of Africa today, India's trade is $98 billion with Africa. India's investments are $75 billion. And we are expecting both this trade with Africa and investments in Africa to grow. Uh, and I certainly uh, sir, agree with what you said, which is now that there is a pan-African larger continental free trade uh, uh, arrangement in the making as it unfolds, uh, I think it makes it easier uh, to both trade with Africa and trade with uh, with uh, and invest in Africa. Now, uh, we may have a unified market here, or you may be moving towards a unified market, but unified markets still require points of entry. Unified markets require regional hubs. Within the unified market, there would be a differentiated level 
uh, of, I would say, uh, governance and governance quality and investment friendliness. And that is where uh, I would say Tanzania is very important because from an Indian perspective, when we look at Africa, for us Africa first of all means East Africa. Because this is the Africa with which we have a historical familiarity uh, with where, uh, again, the diaspora is strong. Uh, so uh, even as Africa uh, as, a, as a continent really uh, lowers its internal barriers, uh, for us the case uh, to be in Tanzania and to work with Tanzania becomes uh, that much stronger. The second, uh, we speak about transactions and assets, but we should not forget the importance of uh, human resources and capacities. And the, the significance of what we are doing by establishing an Indian Institute of Technology campus in Zanzibar is exactly that. That we are today, this is uh, uh, Minister, colleagues, you should see this as actually also an act of investment. Uh, that we are investing today in the capacities of Tanzania, and but we expect this not just to be a Tanzanian uh, institution. We expect it actually to be a magnet for all of Africa and really emerge uh, as a pan-African institution of education and technological uh, excellence. And I'm very glad that it's located in Zanzibar because uh, that is a natural confluence. That's a meeting point really uh, between India and Africa. I make one uh, other uh, important point, uh, which is uh, the changes in India. Uh, you, the, my uh, Indian friends would know, but for the benefits of our Tanzanian colleagues, uh, I want to stress that there is something called Make in India. Make in India, Make for the World is a program which Prime Minister uh, Modi has led for some years now, by which manufacturing in India is growing very rapidly. Uh, we are developing really global level capabilities in a very cost effective manner, uh, in a very technologically relevant manner. And you can see this today, not just, uh, I would say, in our traditional uh, exports, but in sectors like railways, in defense, in drones, in pharma. So you are actually going to be dealing with an India which has much more to give to the world, much more to share with the world, much more to trade with the world. And the world needs it because the lesson uh, really from the COVID is we cannot be reliant on any single geography. That if the world relies on one part of the world and something happens, we are all at risk. I think we saw that over the last three years. So today, how to spread the risk? How to have different manufacturing hubs all across the world, including in Africa, uh, is something which is actually a global de-risking uh, of the uh, world economy. Uh, and this is uh, certainly something that India and Tanzania to, should be working towards. Uh, once again, let me say it's really a great pleasure today uh, to uh, join you all uh, during my visit. And uh, certainly as I head uh, into our joint commission meeting tomorrow, uh, the, the sentiments and the, uh, the enthusiasm that this meeting has generated is something which I will try to, uh, to communicate into that event. Thank you very much.